lo so che non c'è luce in una stanza quando manca il sole. A $1.6 billion gamble on the Las Vegas Strip. A quantum leap into a new era of tourism in Las Vegas. Filled with art, from old masters, to a modern glass-blowing genius, to the marvels of Mother Nature. It's a different kind of treasure, an Italian-themed island in the desert that's no mirage. Steve Wynn's newest mega resort is much more. I'm Newsweek's Ricky Cheese. Come along as the gaming mogul takes us for a guided tour of his romantic dream come true on the Las Vegas Strip, Bellagio. Bellagio was designed to appeal to people who did not come to Las Vegas, in addition to everybody who did come to Las Vegas. And to that extent, it was meant to be a place that was an alternative to Paris, to New York, to San Francisco, in a very real sense. Like Joel uh, Gray says in the wonderful lyric, the opening number, Willkommen to Cabaret. In here, everything is beautiful. The girls are beautiful. Even the band is beautiful. And I, when I say it's nicer inside here than it is out there, I don't just mean the strip. It's nicer inside here than it is in the real world. And people, this place was built to make people say, Ah, I want to. I want to stay here. There are quiet moments. There are moments when there is no energy, when you can go and stand and look. You you can you can see the colors of real flowers and walk in this garden, and then you can go look at the colors of anemones and pineapple from Henri Matisse. You can hear the music. You can smell the flowers. You can get quiet. In here, if we're right, life is good and you don't want to leave if that's the case you say we don't have to go away we can stay we can take a trip and go to las vegas and be at bellagio that was the idea that's a very ambitious goal it was a big change from the going up here at the golden nugget which up the ante downtown the mirage which up the ante on the strip Treasure Island, which was sort of positioned right there between that and what was at that point our premier shopping center, the Fashion Show Mall. And now you have this bringing all of those elements together, the fantasy, the magic, the shopping, the music, the art, and taking it to an entirely different level. This isn't connected really to your earlier projects at all. We're hoping, Ricky, that in the end, the most memorable thing about Bellagio will be its balance. And from the very beginning, the first line on paper, consistency and balance. Not the quick rush of a roller coaster ride, which is what the high energy of our casinos have been in the past, but the overall 360 degree kind of experience that catered to every level of your mood and every tempo of your mood. If you were feeling a little, little, a little intellectual, if you wanted to be a little bit more refined, a little more subtle, and fine art was one thing. If you wanted to let it rip and raise hell, the casino and the other things were that way. And when it came time to make a commercial and advertise all over the country about announce our opening, we didn't say one single word except show the building. Have Andreas Bocelli sing his song and slowly show a few aspects of the place. Every single frame was this building. There was no matte photography. There were no shots from Europe. There was no narrative, some announcer talking but over the, the pictures. The pictures were this place. And people got the message, we wouldn't dare fake a shot. It, look, 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 there's a lake. Look at the balconies. Look at the, we didn't say, hurry, hurry, here it is, step right up, we just said, sing the song show the pictures keep quiet and we said and so it begins what are your favorite parts of the hotel it's impossible for me to answer the question because of course depending on my mood to stand in front of the paintings is to die and go to heaven
to stand under Dale Chihuly's chandelier, to look at the flowers in the garden behind the front desk, to look at the conservatory behind me, to go in any one of the restaurants. Every one of them is designed by someone else. It's a, it's a trip. What is my favorite thing in this place? And the music in the fountains outside, which some of the local folks have been able to enjoy as we've been practicing. You know. My favorite thing about this is not the shopping, although I love Armani and Hermes and Chanel and Tiffany. My favorite thing about Bellagio is the range of experiences that I can have in less than an hour and a half by walking from one part of this place to another. I can't do that anywhere else in the world. That's the thing that cracks me up the most, is the layers of experience. I can go sit on one of these balconies and have a drink and look at the lake. I can get in a small garden or a big one. We had the building alive the last three days. We had, you know, friends and family, and we had about 15,000 people, all the families of our employees. We, we put the building under some pressure, ran all the restaurants free, everything but the games. Even that we played with uh, play money. <laughs> one of our employees walked in and said I wanted a seat in Le Cirque. It was very high in the restaurant. So we don't have any right now. And the employee was from engineering. He said, wait a minute, I just won a million dollars in play money. Don't I qualify? <laughs> I'm a high roller. They said, the guy said, excuse me, come with me. <laughs> you know. uh, I, I have to say one other thing. Money and good taste can get you the greatest tourist attraction in the world. Lovely beyond description. And if you don't have good taste yourself, you can rent it by buying great designers. Right. Money can get you good, and good taste can get you a remarkable place. But all the money in the world, and even as much good taste, can't make the best hotel ever built in any century on any continent. The big item comes down to service, to how warm and comfortable and, and friendly you feel. How much affection do you sense from the staff? Does it instantaneously become your place because you feel special? Only the 10,000 employees that we've recruited out of the 88,000 applicants can do that. So it always comes down to this. You spend all the money, you dream, you scratch around, you take three years, four years, five years, whatever it is, and you end up with this. And it's something else. And that's fine. But for it to keep the promise, it has to be them. My big job this past Friday and with all 10,000 was to get and lift this shoulder off, lift this building off our shoulders and put it on theirs. Because from here on in, Bobby Baldwin, myself, everybody else in this company, we have only one job. And that is to create an environment where the staff can make this place and its dreams come true. A dream come true is the theme throughout Bellagio. When we come back, we'll take you inside the most amazing art gallery in Las Vegas and show you how art is not just restricted to one area here. What makes Bellagio so unusual is the art. The picture is the greatest single masterpiece of a female ever painted by Vincent van Gogh. Yeah. It's been in the Metropolitan Museum on loan from an anonymous owner for 10 years. Philippe de Montebello, when he heard that it was leaving, almost committed suicide, the director of the Met. Really? That picture, that picture was painted in the last week of June of 1890. Young maiden girl with the, uh, with the straw hat in front of a field of wheat behind the hotel he was staying in in Auvers. 24 days later, he painted that the same week as Dr. Cachet. Oh, really? 20, same week. 24 days later, he went and stood in front of that exact wheat field and put a bullet in his chest. Okay. Took him a day to die. What made you decide on these particular artists, these particular times in history? These are my favorites. I lo I've always loved Impressionism. So I started at the end of the last century, from 1870 to the turn of the century is Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. We're going to see it in a minute in the other room. But once I got into Impressionism, I bought a painting by Pablo Picasso that caught my fancy. To say it caught my fancy is a bit of an understatement. It started to haunt me, and it changed my taste in art. And Pablo Picasso, just as he had done to everybody else, jerked me into the 20th century and my taste in art as well. 
the fact that this picture particularly speaks to you says what? Well, the, the point is it, just, it speaks to everyone. Everybody I know, you don't notice it. It's, it's what's known in art as a tough picture. But Steve, you like this picture. This is your favorite piece. I like so this picture because it was the first time that a painting ever started to grab me. I looked at it the first time and I said, ugh, what a cold and unfriendly thing it is. It wouldn't be good for here. And then I looked at it and there was something about her eyes. There was something about her. And when I walked in, it was hanging in my art dealer's office. And I looked at it the next day. And I said, can I look at it again? And I was trying to understand why I was sort of captivated. There's a presence to this figure, whether it's Picasso or Dorimar or all of us. There's a presence. And if you come back into this room four times, you'll begin to realize that your eyes are drawn to this picture. It's powerful. It's haunting. Now what is this room? What, what does that lead to, the staircase? That's, that's, that's the men's spa on the left, on the right, the women's on the left, the exercise room in the middle, and it's the beauty shop downstairs. And the grand stairway going up with the painting that's going on it. Now, this is going to be your four seasons. The four seasons we don't have here in Las Vegas naturally will occur here right, yeah. at Bellagio. And here, this is obviously fall with the burnt oranges and the yellows and the bright oranges and this big 20-foot cornucopia. Isn't that a great piece? Oh, that's great. We had that made. It's made of pieces of oak strapped together like a weaving. How long did that take? It took them about six months to make this. And then we filled it with our big gourds and pumpkins. It's fall. And this is actually going to be on display only for a few months, and then you're going to, to switch it out until December. December 1st, where the place turns into pines, evergreens, Christmas trees, poinsettias. And after that? We're going to Chinese New Year, and we're going to modify that scene by adding great huge dragon and flowers here for Chinese New Year. And then I think we go into anemones or tulips, and then cherry blossoms. And then in the summertime, the bunting is red, white, and blue and everything in here is going to be red, white, and blue. Wow. For the summer season. Wow, amazing. Each month we change the color of the bloom, but every 90 days we change the scent. And what so, do you mean so, by that? Well, the flowers last about a month. Okay. So we have a fall, a winter, a spring, and a summer setting. Uh, here's a, a small pond over here. Maybe next time we've got a Japanese garden. But so the basic set stays the same each season you know, for, for, for 90 days. Right. But within each season, we change the color of the bloom of the flowers three times. Amazing. So you so can come to Bellagio days, every month and see something different. Every 30 days. And we're going to publish the schedule in a newspaper like the entertainment schedule. <laughs> Tulips in January, anemones and roses. So for the locals, for some of the locals who have been feeling as if smell they it. were excluded from Bellagio. Smell the it's, a, it's, a, it's a free thing. It's a this botanical is, garden. This is wonderful. You're going to come here and see something different every month. That's it. Place changes personality. The magnolia trees are here just until December 1st. Then the mags go out. Wow. These are big, deep, like theaters. These go down 15 feet. There's hallways. Each one of these gardens has a big German lift in it so that we, don't, we can't bring lifts in here. We'd hurt the mosaic. So we built a lift for each hole, had them made in Germany. And they stay down inside, all folded up. These are wow. big metal tables on which the sets are sit. You can walk underneath here. Wow. And then there's hallways underneath. This is like a theater. Amazing. Yeah, it's not, that's not just a plant bed yeah. with dirt. No, no, no. <laughs> Now we're going into what area? The lobby. Ah, the Chihuly. There's the Chihuly. This is amazing. There's 2,000 pieces of glass. And since you know about Chihuly, you have an idea what the value of one piece is. Exactly. $30,000. Exactly. One piece. God. How long did it take him to do the individual pieces? How long has he been working months, on it? 18 months. Two years. 18 months. It was quite a trick for him to figure out how to support it. Why did you decide on Chihuly for this piece? Elaine loves glass and introduced me to it, and we've collected Dale for a long time. And we thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to have that color? Isn't that scrumptious looking? It's amazing. <laughs> That's not the only scrumptious item in this resort. Uh, when we come back, we'll show you uh, some of the many uh, restaurants you can experience nine, all under one roof at the Bellagio. You can have all the glamour and charm you want, but if you don't have the food, people won't want to stay. Food is not a problem at the Bellagio. And here is Shintaro. A la carte food, 
around the edges, tampanyaki in the middle. Mm. And once again, open to the lake. Are all the restaurants open to the lake? Except for uh, Aqua and the Blagio Cafe are open onto the pool, okay. where we were, right. and the garden. But your main restaurants are all open? The, the, those are main restaurants. Right. Either they're on the pool or the conservatory or they're here. So you've got water somewhere? Or, or flowers right. or gardens. Here's a restaurant across the way that's our grill. It's Sam's American in New York okay. City, down in the East Village. All the famous chefs in New York go down late at night to eat at Sam DeMarco's restaurant called First because he is unique. Mm -hmm. And this is Sam's American. He lives here now. And it looks like the Flintstones. Yes. Jordan Mosier designed this place. And there's only one way to describe this. It does. It's got a it's very Sam's, historic it's, feel. <laughs> it's Sam's restaurant. And he, he was going to become a celebrity in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Sam DeMarco, you will love this place. Oh, oh gorgeous. is he a guy? And his food doesn't taste like anybody else is cooking. Remarkable yes. guy. Now we're... Oh, ooh. Here we come into our shopping area. Etched glass ceiling, verde gray metal. Gucci, Fred Layton, Armani, Chanel, Tiffany, Prada, Moschino, Hermes, La Perla. The shopping that, that is here and is about to open, including the Venetian, mm -hmm. represents the largest concentration of first class shopping in a small space on the planet. Mm -hmm. No one ever expected these developments in shopping and eating to take place. Las Vegas is has become remarkably agile. And now, in the middle of this is Bellagio. Enormously expensive. Not for the sake of being expensive, but because it is ambitious in its scope. It includes things that, although in and of themselves are not original, they're classic. You know... Are they though more unexpected in this context. desert setting well in, in any hotel setting sure. but especially context, las vegas especially las vegas but actually in any hotel setting hotels are not places for great fine art hotels in and of themselves are not shopping destinations hotels in and of themselves are not great theater but this isn't a hotel well, that's much the point. It, it is much more. It appeals to people's... I mean, here you can come into this lobby under the chandeliers and through the bot botanical garden out here. And here's a hotel that changes its entire mood for summer, for fall, for winter, and spring. This is probably one of the highlights of the hotel. You ready? I'm ready. Picasso. The chef, Julian Serrano, the most celebrated celebrity chef on the West Coast from Massa in San Francisco, lives here now, wow. works for this company. And this is the only restaurant of this kind in the world like this. This is my heart. This is your favorite. One of my favorites. Paolo, come on, boy. Did he get in? Look at the pots. This is going to be a wall of all photographs of Picasso that we're having done, having framed. This is some vases. That's a, that's a painting of Francois Gillot, Claude Picasso and Paloma's mother. Mm -hmm who married Jonas Salk after she's the only woman ever to leave Picasso. You have single-handedly not just raised the bar here in Las Vegas, but created an atmosphere that no one ever would have thought 20 years ago we would ever experience. Did you Me, set out to do that when you got in the casino business, or has no. this been part of an evolution? Step by step, yes, but th this, th the scope of this is all made possible by the things that have happened in between, and by our own progression and maturity in terms of design, the realm, the what we're conceiving. Listen, you know, if you think about things that are totally irrelevant and impossible, then you're, you're a hopeless dreamer. If you're always able to expand your thinking based upon what you've learned today, then you're, you're growing. This is the product of growth. I didn't, I, I couldn't have conceived of this early. This is what came later, <laughs> which is good though, you know, because what comes next, that's a question. If this works, we're going to get a lot of chances. If it doesn't, I'll be in Guatemala. Come on. <laughs> At a time when regular Vegas-style gaming can be found in dozens of states and cruise ships around the globe, once again, Steve Wynn ups the ante with a new game, a new idea, a new reason for the world to visit Las Vegas. I'm Newsweek's Ricky Cheese. Thanks for joining us on this special tour of Bellagio.